In this video, we're going to talk about the patterns in periodic table. So in a periodic table, there is lots of information hidden in it. So first of all, you'll find that, okay, the one on the left and the right, okay, we call these main group elements. While the one in the middle, purple one, okay, we call these transition elements. Most of the time, okay, in Form 3, we're focusing on the main group elements. Other than that, okay, the elements, okay, divided into three types. So you'll find that, okay, the blue one, okay, including the purple one, okay, all these, we call these metals. So they have metallic character. And then on the right, the yellow one, these are the non-metals. So to transit from the metal part, go to non-metal part, okay, we'll get through the one in the middle, we call this semi-metal. Their properties are somewhere in between of metals and non-metals, okay? So normally the semi-metals, they are, are located next to this zigzag path. You can see the red line here, okay? So this red line, okay, not all of the elements next to it will be semi-metal, but most of them, okay, will be semi-metals, okay? So you know that right here, we have metal, semi-metal, and non-metal. Other than that, okay, we also know the state at room condition for different elements by looking at the color of the symbol. So for the color of the symbol, you'll find that uh, the metal one, most of them, they are black in color. Black in color means solid state. So most of the metals, they are solid state in room condition. But you'll find that um, there is one green in color, okay, that will be mercury, okay. Mercury at room condition, they're in liquid state. Other than that, okay, uh, not only we have solid and liquid, okay, we also have gas, okay, but gas okay, mainly happens in the non-metal part. So you can see that the red one here, these are the gas state at room condition. So we have oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, something like that, okay. Not necessary, all the non-metals, they have, uh, they are in gas state. You will still see some non-metal, they are in solid state. But I want you to draw your attentions to bromine as well, okay? This bromine, okay, it is also in a liquid state. So in the periodic table, there are two elements at room condition. They are showing in a, a liquid state that will be mercury and bromine, okay? Just want to remind you, okay, for the mercury, that will be a silvery liquid at room condition, while the bromine, the broad mean will be reddish brown liquid. Okay, so uh, if you imagine some elements, okay, they are liquid state at room condition and they tell you the color, actually you should be able to tell whether they are mercury or bromine. So in a periodic table, okay, the elements, okay, they will have two numbers to represent their coordinate. The first one, okay, is called group while the other one is called period, okay? So group number, it represents the number of electrons in the outermost shells. So you learned in chapter five that a, an element, okay, we can represent uh, using electronic configuration to represent, okay, the number of electrons and also how the electrons are arranged in their shells. So you can see it right here, 287 actually is the the electronic configurations of chlorine. So right here, we found that in the outermost shells, okay, we got seven electrons. So this one, okay, we'll say that the group number of chlorine will be seven, okay? But pay attention to the group number. The group number have to be written in Roman number. Okay, that means you have to be group one, two, three, four, five, six, seven or eight. So eight sometimes we will also say zero. That will be also all right. Okay. So that will be the group number. Other than the group number, okay, I'll just give you one more example. For example, in potassium, that will be two, eight, eight, one. So this one, okay, we will say that they are from group one element. Okay. Remember, you have to put it in Roman number. Okay not in uh, Arabic number. So while the other ones, okay, that will be the period number. Period number it represent the number of occupied electron shell. This word is very important, okay? Because uh, all the elements or okay, all the atoms, okay, there are many electron shells. Some of them, they are occupied. Some of them, they are not occupied, okay? So right here, we'll just focus on the non-occupied electron shells. Basically, okay, you can see that uh, right here, we have one, two, three. 
three shells right there. So therefore, the period number for Corinne that will be period three. Okay. So you see that for period, okay, we'll use Arabic number to represent. So therefore, you have one, two, three, four, five like this. Okay. So for potassium, you will find that we have four numbers here. So the period for potassium that will be period four. Do remember, okay, um, one thing very, very important is that there is an exception. For hydrogen, okay, you know that, okay, hydrogen with one electron. So electronic configuration have to be one. But this one, okay, we find that it is not, it does not belong to group one. Okay, it does not belong to group one because later on you learn that for the elements, okay, in the same group they should have similar chemical properties. Hydrogen is a non-metal. Group one is metal. So obviously, okay, their properties will be totally different. So hydrogen, remember, they does not belong to any group. So in this section, okay, you have to remember the definitions, okay, uh, what means by the group number. And what means by the period number? Okay, you basically say that our oh, period number is the number of occupied electron shell, while group number is the number of electrons in the outermost shell. Remember, it is outermost with an e out in the middle. Okay, so pay attention to the spelling of it. Okay, not outmost, so it's outermost shell. So next, okay, we're going to talk about the group name. Okay, basically, you just need to learn about four group name will do. Okay, not necessarily every single group name. Okay, so group group one element we call those alkaline metals. Pay attention to the spellings. Okay, we just have A L K L. I okay one single I. This is a noun okay, so it is a compound noun actually okay, a noun and a noun okay. Alkaline metals. While group two okay, we call it alkaline earth metals okay. So L I N E stay for the adjectives okay. Alkaline, alkaline earth metal mainly coming from the earth okay. So therefore you'll find uh, these elements okay in the earth. And then group seven okay, we call that okay halogen. Halogen it means that sort producer in latin okay so one of the elements okay you should be very familiar with that will be chlorine so for chlorine you know the table sorts table sorts that will be sodium chloride okay so you find that they can make salt other than sodium chloride many ionic compounds we also call those uh, salts okay so later on you'll learn a bit more about that okay halogens okay for group seven last one okay will be group zero okay group zero um, you should learn that in form two okay those are called noble gas okay so uh, basically like that and other than that okay it will be the transient metals okay the transient metal transient elements okay we talk about the purple pot right here okay so many um metals that we use in our daily life they are transient metals say for example iron copper or zinc silver okay many more okay so um First of all, okay, you can have a look of the uh, example 6.1, okay, so after you learn this knowledge, how we're going to have the uh, exercise. So element X, I said atomic number of 15. Once you see this 15, okay, you know that atomic number equals to number of proton. And then you know that in an atom, number of proton should be the same as number of electrons. So right here, 15, okay, you know that, okay, it means that we have 15 electrons in this element. So once you know the 15 elements, okay, first of all, okay, you, you should do the electronic configuration first. Because it helps you a lot okay, in identifying that group number and also period number okay so uh by doing so 285 okay you can move on to the question deduce the electronic arrangement of at term of x okay so you have done it already done okay it's 285 in which group okay so b1 group okay you should be group five okay so group five remember it should be in roman number okay and then number two okay period okay because we have three numbers here okay so therefore we have period three so this one is arabic number okay part c okay is x is a metal or non-metal so for group five okay it is on the right hand side of the periodic table normally group one two three those are the metal okay group four five six and then continue five to eight normally it have to be 
no metals. Okay. In group four, sometimes you may see uh no metal and also semi metals. Okay, because it's somewhere in the between of the six set path, right? So these okay, you will find that group five, okay, they are no metal. So if you memorize the first 20 elements well, you'll find that group 15 actually is phosphorus. Okay, phosphorus. The color of it is red or yellow in color. Okay, they are not shiny. They are not metals. Okay, in it actually. Okay, and then part D, by referring to the... Oh, we've done it already. Okay, that is phosphorus. The symbol of it is P. Okay, our uh, imperial ta table, actually, we do have trend, okay, across the period. Normally, okay, when we move from the left to the right, okay, we say that across the period. But when we go from top to the bottom, okay, we call down the group, okay? So this is commonly, okay, how we're going to describe, okay, the movements, okay, uh, when you move from one element to the others. When you have uh, move across the period, okay, you'll find that, the trend will be with a metal on the left, semi-metal in the middle, and then no metal on the right. So when you move from the left to the right across the period, okay, they will become more non-metallic. Okay, will become more non-metallic when you from go from left to the right. But from right to the left, it will become more metallic. Not only this, okay, the reactivities will be different. Okay, you will find that okay at both end of the period they will accept noble gas. Okay, noble gas is very very inert. They have no reaction at all. But the one on both end, okay, the metal one, the, the one on the left hand side is the reactive metals. Okay, while the one in group two or group three, they will become less reactive but for the non-metal one okay again on both sides so and far and right hand sides okay the group seven one will be the reactive non-metals while the one okay in group six and five they will be less reactive metals so for chemical properties of elements okay it really depends on the uh, number of outermost shells electrons. Those elements put in the same group, group 1, group 2, group 7, group 8, okay, they should have very similar chemical property, uh, chemical properties, okay. So if you look at the electronic configuration, you'll find that in the same group, all of them have the same number of outermost electron shells, outermost electron shells. Uh, same number of electrons in the outermost electron shells, okay? So, um, we will conclude that, okay, the chemical properties, this one is very important, chemical properties of elements depends on mainly, okay, we do have exception, like just now we say that hydrogen have a uh, one, okay, but uh, sodium, it is 281, okay, they do not have the same chemical properties, so we don't put them in the main, uh, to, in the same group. So, remember the chemical properties, what does it depend on? You can take some clue, okay, from the number of outermost shell electrons, okay? So, if they have the same number of outermost shell electrons, we say that they have similar chemical properties. Remember the word similar, okay? I use the word similar, but not same. Because same have to be the same degree. Similar means that they will react with those kind of chemicals like others, but maybe the degree is different. Some will be, uh, they give up bubbles mildly. Some will they uh, give up bubbles vigorously. Some may be even explosive. Later on in the next videos, you'll learn about how this uh, as well. So, uh, just as I mentioned, H hydrogen has different chemical property with other group 1 elements. So, therefore, even they have one outermost shells, it doesn't fall in the same group as other group 1 elements. So, let's have a look of example 6.2. So, right here, okay, uh, write down the atomic number and also electronic arrangement, okay? Uh, for an atom, you should know that the atomic number which equals to P plus, okay, it will be equal to the number of electrons, okay, so you will use, you use uh, this number of electrons to find out electron arrangement, so uh, for a full atomic symbol, you have A and B, right, the one above is the mass number, which is equals to P plus plus N, okay, proton and neutron. Electron doesn't count, okay, because electron is very small comparing to the proton and neutron and very light as well. So B will be the atomic number, 
which I've said, okay, it will be equal to the number of protons. So this one will be 4, 6, 15, 16, 20. So you just got a table like this. Okay, it's not difficult to understand, okay? And then uh, part B, okay, I just want to remind you, okay, for calcium, it is 2882. Okay, not 2810. Okay, for potassium is 2881. Just now we showed it for you as well. Just these two are very important elements, and for sure you will see that in the exam. Okay, part B, which two elements would have similar chemical properties? Explain your answer. Remember, chemical properties depends on the number of outermost shell electrons. Okay, so if they share the same number of outermost shell electrons, then the chemical properties should be similar. So, right here, you You'll find that this one is two this one is two so we'll say that beryllium and calcium should have same number of outermost shell electrons so therefore they have similar chemical properties i have to emphasize one more time not the same get it oh so last will be the class practice 6.2 um i don't think this question is very difficult okay and i provide you answers right here okay i highly recommend you to pause the videos and try it out on your own okay it is not that difficult at all okay so to summarize these videos okay we have learned about the state of elements in room condition so i uh, just want to remind you about the mercury and also bromine one is silvery one is uh, reddish brown liquid okay that uh, that is a very important uh, of elements okay in the periodic table second one is the definition of group number and period number you have to remember group number equals to the number of outermost shell electron pay attention to the spelling outermost shell electrons and then while the other ones, period number is equals to the number of occupied it, occupied it electron shell. Okay. And then for group name, okay, you should have four names that you have to remember. Group one is alkaline metal. Group two is alkaline L-I-N-E, earth metal. Actually, I have a stupid way to memorize it better. Okay, if you're gonna write a a alkaline earth metal that means it consists of three words and an alkaline metal just consists of two words two words is shorter one so you have l i okay three words is a longer words okay your l i n e okay hopefully it help you to memorize it better okay and then with well, group seven there will be halogen and then the last one is group eight that will be noble gas okay so pay attention to spelling for nobel okay not nobel okay you're not getting any nobel prize by spelling wrong the name okay uh point four a trend across the period okay you should know that when you move from the left to right across the period they become more non-metallic character okay lastly it's about the chemical properties okay if they have same number of outermost shell electrons okay they should have similar chemical properties okay so that's all for this video bye bye